Buenos dias and welcome back to another video, my friends. I hope you're staying healthy and I hope you're staying safe wherever you are in the world. Today on the channel, I wanna talk about Canon's latest software for the Canon EOS R6 and whether it's a game changer or not. Let me note something before we get started. On April 1st, Canon released firmware updates for the R5, the R6, and the 1D Mark III. However, the R6 firmware update came with a little bug. It turns out that if you were shooting in movie mode or video mode, and you were shooting at 1080p with an EFS lens or in crop mode, it turns out that your camera would or could potentially be non-responsive. So Canon pulled down the 1.3.0 version of that firmware and quickly released the 1.3.1 version of the firmware. And that is what we are talking about today. There are a total of seven enhancements or fixes in this latest firmware update for the Canon EOS R6. However, I am only going to talk about the first two because I believe they provide you with the most bang for your buck. However, I will post all of the fixes straight from the Canon website in the description down below. I've done other firmware update videos on this channel. And just like before, you download the firmware onto your computer. From your computer, you push it onto an SD card. You take the SD card, you put that in your camera. Then you go to the wrench menu, which is the yellow menu. You go to page five on the Canon EOS R6 and you scroll down to firmware. And then in the camera section, find the latest firmware that you have on the camera and then update it and follow the instructions on the screen. So now you've loaded up the latest firmware update onto your camera and you're ready to enjoy some of the features that it now provides for you. Let's talk about Canon's second firmware update on this list and that is electronic full-time manual focus on the AF tab of your menu. In and of itself, full-time manual focus isn't anything new. In the early days, Canon incorporated this feature into their cameras so you could lock on to an AF point or a subject, and then if you need to make a slight alteration, you could manually move your lens and get that one piece in focus that it slightly missed. Again, that's because there was limited AF points, where today there are tons of AF points on these cameras. Now you might be asking yourself, what is this full-time manual focus? I shoot in autofocus. If you're shooting, let's say macro and or close-up photography, it's probably going to benefit you there the most. There may be other reasons you use this feature, but close-up photography comes to mind. So the idea is this, your focused on a subject, you're in autofocus, right? And so you're either using back button or you're using the shutter button as your autofocus and trying to dial in that focus. But you notice that the piece that you want is just slightly out of focus and you kind of want to dial that in. So you can actually just take the focusing ring and make a micro adjustment to the exact area that you want in focus and then fire away. Now I know this might not be for everyone, but it comes with the firmware update and it's good to have in a pinch and know that you can utilize it if you just need to make a micro adjustment. And that's why they call it full-time manual focus is while you're in AF or autofocus on your lens, you can make that micro adjustment and make that manual adjustment so you can get the image just right. And you never know when you're going to need it. Now, is that a game changer for you? Perhaps, perhaps not. Now let's get into the number one enhancement on the latest firmware update for the Canon EOS R6, and that is adding IPB light to 4K. I think this is huge for a variety of different reasons, but the main two reasons are this, is that IPB itself is already a smaller file size. Most people are used to all eye and were outraged that all eye was not on this camera. But frankly, I showed this in the past and you can't really tell all eye from IPB. Now there's IPB light and I challenge you right now to let me know which one on the screen right now is IPB standard or IPB light.
All right, did you get it right, eagle eyes? I know I have a good bunch out there. Let me know down in the comments if you got that one right. Now let's check out 4K at 60 frames per second. See if you can tell which one is IPB standard or IPB light. All right, my friends, how did we do? So as you can see, or may not see, these video files are very comparable in my eyes. And the fact that IPV Lite comes in at a file size of about half that of the standard IPB, I think that's huge, especially for storage purposes. You're gonna spend less money on storage. You'll maximize the space in your current SD card and your computer won't be as taxed when you're dealing with larger file sizes. So there's a lot to be thankful for that IPB Lite was introduced in the 4K world because you're still shooting 4K. You can also shoot it in 1080p, but if you want still a quality video shooting in 4K, but shooting in IPB Lite, that's the best of both worlds. And the reality is that the image is pretty solid. So I'm going to leave these files down in the description below, links to all these files, and you can load them up and compare for yourself. All right, that's gonna do it. The latest firmware update, is it a game changer for the Canon EOS R6? Let me know if you are gonna utilize either of these two new firmware enhancements for the Canon EOS R6, whether it be the full-time manual focus for close-up photography or in the videography world, are you going to utilize the IPB in 4K feature? Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to chat with you about it. Until the next time, please like this video if it provided you any value whatsoever. And until the next one, I love y'all. Peace.